From Blue to Golden, a miraculous ladybug fanfiction written and narrated by Eleanor Rose. Artwork provided by Talusi Art on Instagram. You can find a link to her social media in the description box below. If you haven't already, make sure to check out other videos and subscribe to this channel for more miraculous ladybug fanfiction, and leave a thumbs up and a comment to help support the YouTube algorithm. When do you tell someone you love them? Hey, bug, Cat Noir said, taking a seat beside her. Hey! Ladybug looked up, taken off guard by his blue-lit silhouette. People didn't give enough credit to the light just before dawn. Some fight, huh? Yeah, we sure showed them. Almost makes me miss Hawkmoth. She laughed, grateful for the cover her mask provided as he brushed shoulders. He was a literal terrorist, Cat. Yeah, but it was fun, don't you remember? His victims were the creative ones, Ladybug argued. But yes, there are some that stand out more than others. Man, I can't believe it's been seven years since you fell from the sky. Ha ha. It embarrassed her to this day. I swept you off your feet. That's a bad joke. How's that girlfriend of yours? She asked, feeling like the blue morning light casting shadows across the rooftops. Oh, we broke up. Really? Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. It made it all the harder to sit next to him don't. It was a few months ago, and I wasn't feeling it from the start. Oh, wow. Had it been that long since they saw each other? What are you up to these days? Same old, same old. You? Huh, well, you know. What about that boy you like? He leaned in, an eyebrow raised in anticipation. Ugh, this cat throw out social boundaries ever since he started dating a few years back. Huh? Did he know, you know, the one who lost his dad? Oh! He meant Adrian. She'd gotten over him years ago. I haven't seen him in a long time. Kind of like us. Huh? I haven't seen you in a long time. Cat reached up to touch the end of her ponytail, warming her like the first light creeping above the horizon. Feels like it. She reached up to touch her earlobes, a nervous habit, and he took it as a message to fall back. So, is there anyone else? He asked, watching the sunrise. Ladybug gave him a long glance trying and failing to work up courage as she noticed how his jawline had deepened over the years. Once they started meeting up two years after putting Hawkmoth away, he seemed different. She couldn't place it, because it's not like he was any more mature, but Cat Noir grew up in their time apart. Here and there. But not right now? No. She turned her attention back to the sky painted pink as blue turned to gold. Not right now. Not even a crush? He leaned back in. Wouldn't you like to know? She said, bopping him on the nose as an attempt to bat him away. He might be able to hear her heartbeat drumming for him if he got any closer. Oh? His ears twitched. There is someone. Quiet, you. Ladybug had to turn her back to him, worried her mask couldn't hide her pink cheeks any longer. You could try kissing him, Cat suggested. That would be a catastrophe. No, that's what happens when I kiss someone. His tongue slipped between his teeth as he laughed at the pun, and Ladybug had never been so attracted to someone. 
I'm good. Gravity touched his face, pulling his grin into a pout. I didn't mean I'd kiss you. I learned the consequence of that years ago. I'm not a child anymore, Cat. She didn't know what she meant by that, but there was one thing that hadn't changed since they first met. Marinette wasn't good at confessing her feelings, and Ladybug wasn't any better. Oh? His tail flicked. I didn't realize you were so casual. That's not what I meant. Although, she noticed he didn't lean closer as she expected. It's a shame you aren't seeing anyone. His eyes moved back to the horizon, giving her another opportunity to chastise herself for checking him out. Why's that? Taylor Swift 6, track 8. I'm sorry? Hey, want a coffee? I don't drink. Still? He stood up, and she couldn't see his face. Okay, be right back. Where was he... Whatever. He was Cat Noir, and his mannerisms tended to line up with the title. That much hadn't changed, at least. Okay. Calm down, Ladybug. He doesn't know you have a crush on him, and he's not about to find out. The Taylor Swift comment hung above her head, which meant a distraction from recalling how his cheekbones pointed toward his nose. She looked around, detransformed, then pulled out her phone. The Reputation album cover popped up, and she scrolled through the lyrics to track eight. Gorgeous. If you've got a girlfriend, I'm jealous of her. But if you're single, that's honestly worst, because you're so gorgeous it actually hurts. Another line hit her hard. Ocean blue eyes looking in mine. I feel like I might sink and drown and die. She reached up to touch her face, recalling a compliment he'd given her around the time Reputation came out. He'd gone from calling her Bluebell to Ocean Eyes. Her thought from earlier crossed her mind. When do you tell someone you love them? No, no. She wasn't in love. She loved him, but she wasn't in love with him. Would she be lying if she said she didn't enjoy playing vigilantes with Cat over the years since Hawkmoth was put away? Yes, but the feelings she caught for him needed to be cleansed like an Akuma, or else she'd go crazy. She couldn't fall for him, and not because they were partners. She couldn't fall for him because she was his first crush, and everyone has to get over theirs eventually, so she was old news. She couldn't fall for him because he wouldn't fall for her. Spots on, Ladybug murmured, seeing him bound from rooftop to rooftop. Here, Cat exclaimed, striking a dramatic pose as he landed nearly two minutes later. An orange juice for you, my lady. She laughed and took the treat, realizing just how thirsty she was. Thanks, Cat. Anything for you. The words tugged at her. They were sweet at first, but like all fruit, grew bitter as time passed. Rather, as her feelings grew, he continued to leave her behind. She knew it wasn't his fault. She could just ask him out. But how? How do you ask out a guy you very clearly turned down years ago? Ugh. Karma had a way of catching up with her. If it wasn't for the drinks, she'd be leaving right about now. I finally installed TikTok, she said, reaching for a conversation. Oh, you finally forsaken your oath to Vine? Oh, shush. She gave him a playful shove, nearly spilling his ice to something or other. I've got a Taylor Swift song stuck in my head because of this rooftop. You mean gorgeous? No, track 10. You could refer to them by their titles, you know. And give away my secrets? Never. You are such a fanboy. She rolled her eyes. What's your favorite lyric? 
like, ever? Or from that album? Or that song? She shrugged. Whatever. Cat leaned back, putting his arm slightly behind her to do so. It's probably from track 11. Yeah? Deep blue, but you painted me golden. That took her by surprise. You must have a thing for sunrises. Huh, she said, not sure how else to comment. Looking up, the sky matched the lyric. The blue dawn painted golden. She could see how someone would turn that into a lyric about finding love. And pretty girls, he said, looking up at her with a wink as he rolled into a lounging position. You're such a tease. It's only a tease if you have feelings, he said, a little too smug as he placed his hands behind his head for a pillow. It's only a tease if you have feelings, she mocked, scooting her butt down so she could lay beside him. If only he knew. He pushed his head against her shoulder. I hope you find someone, LB. Right back at ya, she wanted to say but couldn't. She was so overwhelmed for him that she couldn't think straight. I should go. She sat up abruptly, knocking Cat across the cheek by accident. Black! Instead of apologizing, she stared. What was that noise? She asked, biting back a laugh. Don't question my sound effects. Still living life in a video game, huh? Excuse you, Cat said, crossing his arms. I live life like an anime, and you know it. Hmm, she said, pulling out her yo-yo to leave. What? Must be a long-running shonen, because you don't have a love interest. Oh, it's definitely shonen, he said, crossing his arms. But it's the cliche where the guy is stuck on his first crush indefinitely. She perked up. It was news to her. Still carrying a torch for your teenage flame? I've been fanning it for years, he said, slinging his elbows over the balcony's railing, his back to Paris. I think I might sink and drown and die. What, they make you so happy it turns back to sad? She asked, pressing the reference. Something like that. The sentence didn't come out as smug or playful. It seemed almost a declaration of defeat. Well, that's a shame, Ladybug said, taking the opportunity. If this went sideways, she could play it off, right? Oh? Any girl who turns you down is a fool, her younger self included, although she understood why. You mean it? he asked, face softening. What expression did he wear now? Yeah. She felt the electric pulse of anxiety through her fingertips. I do. She turned to take the final sip of orange juice so she had a reason to get out of here, but Cat grabbed her shoulder, leading her to him in a way she couldn't turn away. You mean it? He asked again, voice low and more mature than she'd ever heard it before. Oh. Yeah. Come on, Ladybug. Meet his eyes. Look up. Look up. He didn't move holding her there for a moment. After what felt like an eternity, he sighed, his grip on her shoulder relaxing. Well, thanks for the... Ladybug made the mistake of looking up as he spoke, and his eyes widened when their sight lines made contact, cutting him off. He mumbled something and looked away. It must have been an incantation, because something possessed her to cup her hand around his jawline and turn his face back to hers. The moment was quiet as they held eye contact, and it stayed quiet as she took in the way he smelled and his taste. Without being able to articulate how it felt, 
Ladybug found herself kissing Cat Noir. Oh, world! She was kissing Cat Noir! Ladybug pulled back, half in shock and half because she realized he might actually take it as a confession of her feelings. You know, the feelings she hid since she was 18 and was now 20. Those feelings? Big oof. Except, well, it was like coming up for air. Because Cat tangled his hand in her hair as he secured a hold on her lower back and pulled her in for seconds. Oh, world. Should she? Could she? Ladybug let herself relax, draping her arms behind his shoulders. This was nice. She gathered her courage to release the anxiety fluttering through her veins, turning her feelings for him from blue to golden. Yeah, Cat wouldn't do this just for fun. If he kissed her, it's because he meant it. And somehow... The sunrise made this moment perfect. Hey, cat, she murmured, breathless. Yeah? His eyes stayed closed as his nose grazed hers. I love you. He squeezed her body close to his, a pincer grip that would be impossible to escape from. No take backs. He said, the words muffled into her shoulder. Yeah, I promise. She hugged him tighter and looked at the sky, golden with dawn. Yeah, that's how you tell someone you love them. Thank you so much for listening, and once again... Another thank you goes out to to Lucy Art on Instagram for the use of her art in this video. If you like this story and you'd like more Miraculous Ladybug fanfiction, you can check out other videos on this channel. I'll catch you in the next one!